everybody? Oh dear, I'm really loud. I'm sorry. <laughs> we haven't done rehash since I adjusted my microphone. Hey! Uh, we got Little Miss Fodder, we got Adam. We got somebody else. I don't know who else. How's everybody doing today? Having a wonderful Christmas, Adam. Is that a thing that other people say, or is that just me? <laughs> Free Eve is Christmas, Adam. Yeah. How you doing, Brayden? Having a good time? I am, I am great. It's it's wonderful. Excited for Christmas. Wonderful family stuff. Can't wait. So yeah. fun surprises. <laughs> I've been having a really fun time. I got a new 3D printer a couple weeks ago and I finally started using it on Sunday. And just like, I'll show you all this. So this is the first ever dragon mini that I printed, like two years so ago. Cool. This is the one that I just finished today. Just like wow. in comparison, the two different That's prints. Cool. They're both, st they're both, the 3D files are both created by the same person too. So he has gotten better and my material has gotten better too. I love it. I'm very excited to paint this dude at some unknown point in the future when I decide that I have the time. So yeah, I've also That's, got a little Jelania yeah. figure. Uh, she just has her hair and her face and that's it. That's painted. <laughs> but cool. Well, let's... We have a lot. You are very much in trouble. I see Lomas Fodder is in the chat saying that Rayla is in the chat, so mind your answers. I know, so here we go. <laughs> <laughs> She's in the chat, huh? Alright. I, I don't know what she would even say if she was there, so... If Patrick's there, then he could probably answer this for us. But... Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's been a while since we've had you for rehash, and there's been, like, kind of a lot. Been... Yeah. A lot's happened to Corbett. He's like, <laughs> oh, there's just so much that's happened to him. I feel and bad it's very for him. much like happening to him. He's not seeking it out. He's not like making plans to do crazy stuff. It's just like, oh, surprise, this is a thing for you now. Deal with that. <laughs> yeah. 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 For sure. And I think so that's a much... thing that like every character eventually has a moment where like they're focused on. Like, mm -hmm. it's. It's pretty pretty intense on Corbett, I think, or at least was yeah, for a bit. Uh, it, it was, and I think right now, with where we ended, where we're going forward, it'll be kind of be with everyone again and not so centered on him, mm -hmm. on like the story. But man, Corbett has some, his emotions are all over the place right now. <laughs> yeah, I have more questions tonight than we have had on any show so far. Okay. Uh, so let's just get right into them. This very first one, this is from me. We learned a few weeks ago that not only is Corvette nobility, but of a pretty high level. What was the reaction to encountering Corvette's squad, followed up by them outing him? Um, so Corvette was just, he was super excited. He is uh, very much a, a people person. Um, He's just very, he likes being with people that he likes. So like that his best friends, the people he's known like forever, um, or thought he knew super well. Um, <laughs> Tian, gosh, Patrick. <laughs> anyway, uh, he was just super excited. So seeing them, he was, it was awesome. But then the revelation, for some weird reason, like Patrick brought it up early, like he was surprised that Corbett talked more and like it was open with Elodin, like his his spear and the magic sentient spear, but not about his nobility and his mm -hmm. heritage. So it's like that was kind of the thing that for some reason Corvette was just like, you know, like this is new, this is weird, this is all messed up, but you know, I kind of the nobility, the background, the importance he he was enjoying not having to rely on that or have people just assume so many things because of it. Okay. And so he's like, okay, hey, I can be open with this thing, but with that, I, I he just was like, that's not important, or I don't really want to. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, I found it very interesting, like, that we all took for granted that you were nobility. I don't know if you had ever said that you were. I think you mentioned that your family was yeah. rich, kind of, maybe? Just, just well off which I definitely, he definitely acts like it. And like, so you know he, he dresses like it, he looks it's like very, it, he acts like it. It's clear to see. But the, yeah, <laughs> but the thing is, 
what range of nobility was like the funnest thing to be like, okay, like I'm like one of the most important people, <laughs> especially because I'm an asimer. So let's just not, you know, think, think about that too much. Hmm. Put that on the back burner. But it's not like Corvette is afraid of his lineage or super ashamed of it. You had mentioned like you don't necessarily love everything your dad does. Yeah, no, he, Corvette and his dad, his dad loves Corvette, of course, because he's like, hey, this is my son, is an Acemer, is important. Like, there's only a handful of them in the world at one point. And so my, his dad's very proud of Corvette. Okay. It's just what he's born as. Um, but Corvette does not like his dad very much. And he just knows his dad is kind of shady. Not really super shady, but he's just rude. And is not a good lord of like caring for people, so. Mm. But That's, yeah. Corvette's more of like a normal, understanding kind of guy, and his dad is a little bit more of that stereotypical, I'm in charge, I don't care sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. He just. He's seen things that his dad has done or been around moments his dad has just been like rude or taken advantage of or just been like, because I am the boyar, I do this. Or you've, you've upset me, so you're getting punished. And Corvette's like, that's not right. Like, he has a fairly moderately strong sense of like justice, right and wrong. So. So I, I, I have noticed like since it's come out, RTM has mentioned several times, like, oh, geez, everybody is nobles. Do you think that there could be some potential conflict between Corvit and RTM because of Corvit Station? Um, maybe I would, I kind of, because of everything coming out and the way that Corvit and RTM have interacted so far, I would say less. I'm, I think he's less concerned. Uh, <laughs> nobles are the worst. Hey, you've met one and you like Corvette, RTM. <laughs> so, um, but the fact that he's like a Boyar's son, maybe that'll change a little bit. But especially like the first interaction of when RTM was like, hey, I'm an ASMR too, and saved everyone's butts from that golem. And then confronted him like, are you going to turn me in? It's like, uh, no, like that's, you're doing you, I do me. Mm. So, interested to see yeah. how uh, how it develops and stuff because I think there's going to be some character development starting to happen. Um, yeah, especially because we're going to be traveling for like a month. There's like I feel like unless there's a lot of random encounters on the road, there we need to have like moments of role play to like make it realistic. Of like we've been hanging out for like a week and a half, and then we're gonna jump like a month. And I feel like mm -hmm. there'd be a lot of interactions on the road that I really want to see between people. I think that'll be really cool. All mm -hmm. right, next question. Um, this one is from from Titan from Bones. This one is a little bit. Um, I had to take some liberties in editing this question a little bit because it 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 aged like it it, it, it answered itself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Do you personally think that Corvid's entourage is going to prove a problem? Um, oh, me personally, he's asking Brayden, not Corbett. Yeah, um, yeah. So, uh, I think Brayden did a little bit. <laughs> Obviously, they're gone now, so it's like, yeah, okay, that's, I guess. that's why this question didn't age very well. <laughs> but, but no, so at first, I was like, oh, it wasn't necessarily worried, but uh, I was definitely like, okay, like, as Brayden thinking about Corbett, like, how in the world does Corbett go to be like, hey, I'm going to stick this out or be with this new group of people and not go with his his old companions. And, like, I was, like, debating on it. Like, it, it just, like, would come to my mind, like, all week. I'm like, huh, that's a good question. I don't know if I have the answer. We'll see. <laughs> was kind of what it was. And now and I, I guess like, that... Any ahead. thoughts? He's like... I got plans. I'm like, uh, sure, okay, I'll. So, I'll improv. He's like, yeah, that's that's good. I'm like, okay. 
And so it's it's clear at this point that they're not necessarily going to try and take you away from the party or get you to do something else because they're gone. They're no longer around. Yeah. But could there be a possibility yeah. of that being an additional problem? Like if they get um, captured and tortured and they get a lot of information or, I mean, you're going to need to also explain who exactly these people are and their relationship to Corvette because, you know, could they be a pressure point? You know, like mm -hmm. how there's obviously something going on between him and Rayla. How much of a something and could that be like, a, you know, a, uh -huh. a pressure point? Um, all right. So the three people, Tian, uh, Ayana and Rayla. Tian is like the head of his personal like bodyguards. He, he, he is his personal bodyguard for years. Um, okay. Tian's, you know, an older middle-aged older man um very experienced and apparently is an asmr so that's cool patrick i'm still blown away by that um <laughs> uh let's see so he's just been around for a while and he's just kind of it's interesting tian is somewhat the father figure in corbett's life that he is proud of that he's like Tian's always been respectful. He's always been someone who's tried to do what's right. Um, and so he's always wanted to follow for that example more than his own dad, because his dad's a jerk. Um, so that's Tian, that's um, really close there. Iona is just like his best bud from, I don't know, just growing up. Um, and he's probably the one with the least background fleshed out. But he, I just know he's a, a good buddy. They've done a lot of stuff to help um, the people of the, of the Corbett's dad's um, subjects to like kind of help just the common people out, ease some of, you know, if someone's struggling, they kind of do a little Robin Hood esque stuff. <laughs> um, okay. So he and Iona do that, have kind of started doing that a lot. Um, and then Rayla is, uh, Corvette grew up in the monastery, which is in a different town than his, than like the capital. Right. And Rayla's father was like the lord of that town. And so while he was in the monastery, that's how he met her. Um, okay. And they just kind of grew up together doing that too. Like just being in close proximity. Um, okay. They're not, they've never officially been a thing because Corvette's, status and stuff his dad cares about <laughs> all that stuff but yeah they've definitely liked each other before so okay so all three of these people corbett has known for a while yes yes okay i foresee yeah. a problem Did... <laughs> i foresee With a turn what? yourself in or they all die a sort of ultimatum oh yeah We'll cross that one <laughs> I'm also very sorry if that was not an already in Patrick's plans and I have given him ideas. I kind of doubt it, um, <laughs> but if so, I'm very sorry. Um, cool. Well, moving on from the entourage to Piotr, has Corvette's view on Piotr changed after learning what he did? Um... Yes and no. He's he realizes what Piotr did is not good at all, and like this is where his instincts of like right and wrong get muddled a bit. Corbett's is like, but he wasn't. The intention wasn't necessarily to murder someone, um, and so that's just Corbett's still the the. He's still deliberating on that. Um, but he is super intrigued by Piotr. Um, he is really interested in who Piotr knows, kind of where he's been because of the nobility status of just all that kind of stuff. He's like, has Piotr ever visited uh, the Southern Isles that I just not remember? <laughs> that's like, that's something that he's super curious about, mm -hmm. kind of what uh, connections they might both have. So. Um, but with regarding that Corvette, he feels like he probably should 
pulled it a little strongly against Pyotr, but he doesn't. I see. Yeah, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> I find it interesting how uh, how easily everyone's just like, okay, like you were drunk, that's fine. Like, drunk doesn't yeah. change you into a totally different person. If I was drunk, <laughs> I wouldn't be a murderer still, you know? Like, that's not something that uh -huh. would happen. So whether or not he was fully lucid and thinking straight, it is still something that is in him deep down. Yeah. And I yeah. find it so interesting that, because everyone's such a good person, uh, they're just like, yeah, it's fine. You're, you cool. know, just... You know, uh, what, what was it? Like, RTM gave a big old thing about, like, oh, you need to become a better person and, like, put out good and stuff. It's like, wow, you are really... <laughs> You're giving him a <laughs> lot of benefit of the doubt right there. I'm just like, yeah, I assume yeah. that you want to be a good person <laughs> yeah. instead of well, continue to murder her. <laughs> yeah, no, Corvette, there is a reason, like, there's something in his history that gives him the give because he doesn't so far, he doesn't think Pyotr wants to be a murderer. It's never, whenever was his intention. Um, he's had experiences before that has made him give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, he can't judge type of a thing. Hmm. Every time that you talk about stuff, I'm like, there's, there's always just like a little bit that you hold back and you're just like, by the way, <laughs> The by backstory, the, way, is, the backstory I'm, is a I'm binder. <laughs> it's a thirty-seven, like, it's a, it's a set of thirty-seven graphic novels of his backstory <laughs> that I have. I have all these details. Well, I, I had a lot of fun making Corbett and his background, and I was like, Patrick, what do you think about this? And like, before we started the campaign, I was like, Patrick, here's some ideas and stuff. What, what about all of these things? Like, this is a lot of stuff I get over. <laughs> like, is that too much? It's like, no, this is great. I'm like. Okay, cool. Yeah, you'll learn that it'll backfire on you more than it'll backfire on him. <laughs> I, yeah, I just... <laughs> Thank you, yeah. Patrick, for implementing <laughs> so much of my background already. Oh, yeah. That'll be good. That'll be good stuff. All right, now we're going to move on to stuff that happened in Barrelgrad. Uh, does, this is from Little Miss Fodder. Does Corvid think that Artyom's visit to the church is what caused the manhunt? Uh... After seeing the librarian, no. Before the librarian, um, when the manhunt started, pa uh, probably he'd probably assume that someone in the church just has all those connections with the profane guard, and that's how they learned about them being there. So, not necessarily that RTM's straightforwardness <laughs> uh, caused it all, but the fact that someone there at the monastery is, is connected is what he assumed before the librarian showed up. And then he's like, oh crap, it was us. <laughs> <laughs> like, ah, oh, we literally walked up to the library. It's like, can you open this, you know, creepy, dark magic We're looking ritual for something like, about this dark ritual from the dark priestess. That was like one of the first things that was said to her. It's like, we're looking for your boss. <laughs> Yeah. No, Adam, we did establish as the librarian. You did nothing wrong. Before we knew as the librarian, Corbett thought the monastery visit was what started. I am going to say, I don't think that that's necessarily black and white like that. Ivor did show up, and she was aware that he knew about us. Mm. I feel like it could have very easily so been both. The, the, the knights of Baranislav were wandering around. The librarian doesn't have power over the knights, mm. I would imagine. I would imagine that either Bishop Ivor or the Patriarch was like, go get these people, uh, they're a problem. And then that, like, to do was like, what helped her find us and just like, all right, now I'm going to take advantage of this situation and also go for you. <laughs> I don't think that it was one or the other. I feel like it was probably both. Mm -hmm. And Shalanya definitely feels that way too. Because <laughs> yeah. she didn't, she well, wasn't there in the library. She didn't know what you yeah. guys did. Yeah. She just well, knows what Corbett, she saw our team do. I just love it because I think Corbett, Piotr, and Kadiak are all like, oh, crap. <laughs> just like, <laughs> we screwed up. Especially Piotr. I just... Corbett does think it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious that Piotr <laughs> was flirting with the librarian, even. I think it was so. where she was flirting with him. I She start. was, but 
thank you, Ian, for going through that experience for us. <laughs> I doubt that it will be the last time that that sort of thing happens to the one of us, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah. The second question also has to do with that. Does Corvette suspect corruption on any specific level based on the conversation about the meeting? Um, not suspect corruption. I don't know about like what level, like, especially after this incident, probably, well, after, you know, a couple of dozen people are chasing him down the tunnel, then, uh, yeah, he's like, okay, we are in way over our heads right now, so. But he does, I honestly, he has no clue what's, you know, how far is the arch, arch matriarch, like, evil. Is she the dark priestess? <laughs> that'd, be that'd be great. Terrible. That'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Miss Potter, please flirt with all librarians. Well, if we go into more libraries, we'll see what happens. We'll definitely send Piotr in. Yes. For that. What if the librarians are dudes, though? We'll send Piotr in. <laughs> we'll send Drith in, and he'll be like, hey, I've got a flute to show you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's just, it's just my Piotr going. Piotr, he can flirt with everyone. Remember, he's a diplomat. He knows how to... It's yeah. Fine, everybody. <laughs> Adam, I don't want to see no flutes. Yeah. <laughs> um <laughs> All right, next question. This is this one we don't this is probably going to be more just speculation. Corvette uncovered information about the ritual/sacrifice slash sacrifice of breath and the five subsequent sacrifices needed to revive Morpheus. Given that the sacrifice of breath occurred 3 years ago in Pelegrod, how many other sacrifices do you think have been made? Ooh, uh, I think there's four of them already done, just randomly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I think that, like, yeah, it takes time to get whoever the heck they need, but if three years is still a long time, mm -hmm. and in a magical world, it's like, uh, you could get to places a lot faster with yeah. magical means, so it's like, than what we've been able to do. So. And with the, the possibility that this has been under planning for centuries, if not millennia, it's like, all right, we've got all the prep for all six of them, and then we're just going to do them all right in a row, because then it's mm -hmm. less obvious. Because, like, Pelegro dropping out of existence, Patriarch didn't seem to care. No one seemed to care. <laughs> There's like, oh, the closest oh. town to us? No one's been there for three years? That's fine, you know? But yeah, yeah. that's kind of a big thing, very obvious thing to draw attention. Yeah. Maybe they've done um, a lot. And also, who says that the sacrifice of breath was the first one done? It could have not been the first sacrifice that's already ha that happened. So mm. I don't know. I just have like Brayden uh, thinks that like a few of them, three or four of them, are already done. So it's like mm -hmm. time. Like we're down to the last couple to, gotcha. to figure this out. So you don't subscribe to that idea that was floated around after the game of like there's six of us and six sacrifices. Oh, I, I think it's I think it'd be so cool if that was what it was. Like, but do I actually think that's what it is? No, because the uh, sacrifice of breath happened without us. As far as we know, maybe it, like that's the <laughs> dark past that Drith is hiding from us. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe one of us. I don't know forgot what happened it's like oh i was sacrificed but i'm now alive or here at least yeah, so knows? that's interesting i but if if it is like one like sacrifice for each of us all six of us i think that's just hilarious and great <laughs> yeah it, it does make it it does make me a little nervous the fact that um mave didn't want jelonia's shadow He's like, oh, you'll need that for later, and that's one of the rituals, like a oh, sacrifice well, of shadows. Just like I don't remember that. That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Except that she was, she totally wanted drifts. So maybe it mean? is more targeted. Of like, that is mine. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe it. Is. <laughs> Patrick, please answer that's all of the questions. Please yeah. tell us the whole story of what's going to happen, so we can please be yeah. prepared. Patrick, who was the sacrifice of breath? Which one of us six? 
It has already been sacrificed. Yeah. I think I think it very well could have been uh Jelonia, actually. I do have some thoughts about that. It very well could have mm. been intended to be her. Um but it didn't work out. Because of uh, the, the raid onto your family's house? Yeah, yeah, that's kinda of what I was thinking. Like that might have been what they were unless they're just trying to nab a bunch of people from a bunch of places to be the different ones. True. And she would have been a shadow or something anyway. I don't know. It sounds like a terrible thing, so I'm glad that it didn't happen. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Uh, is still with us. Not dead. Yeah, it's great. Not, yeah, no. <laughs> she gets to just, get into fights with everybody. Which just adds, <laughs> just help gives Corvette's life a little more drama. That's yeah. all. Yeah. Which, that is the next question from Lil Miss Fodder. What did Corvette okay. think of the arguments between Anya and Artyom and Kadiok? Oh, those dramas. Cool. Um, gosh, I gotta remember. But were you thinking of other about. drama? <laughs> I was in the drama that Rayla confronted Corvette about Anya. It's like, who's she? <laughs> I was like, uh. Well, that that would mean that he thinks that there's something happening, because otherwise he'd just be like, she's just some scary chick I like am with right now. Uh huh. When you say it like that, it's great. <laughs> Um, all right, what was the con- man, the conversation was about Cadillac, uh, the eye, his eye, that one, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although it did start with, um, Anya being mad at Artyom and how he acted with the Bishop Ivor. Yeah, that's right. So, the Corvette kind of, so with the, the- Bishop Ivor thing, probably, he thinks probably a better way could have been going about it, but standing up for, like, people is, like, what Corvitz is, like, way to go. Like, that's what he was, he's been doing against his dad, essentially. Kind of. Um, trying to. He's also Good terrified Good people of in this dad, party. So, well. He, Knights in shining trying, armor. <laughs> he wants, he wants to say he stands up to the, his father, but is also does it like not as openly as he could so corvette is also not like that's something like that hurt. he's like ah, I, that's not how we should do it but then again do i do things as i know that should be done no so um with cadillac's eye the thing is we all got the wishes because of the eye or the the, the wishes the questions because of the eye. Um, and if we were okay with it, I thought he was just like, kind of, uh, what the crap? Like, you're giving up your eye type of a thing? But if we were okay with it initially, and then we learned later that something that none of us knew was going to happen, he's just like, okay, that's really annoying. But, and yeah, if we knew that was gonna happen, let's not do it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, I get I get the frustration at the same time as like, well, Cadillac didn't know we were all going to get spied on or whatever. Yeah. Did we know that before? No, we didn't. I think that is a very appropriate point of like, we were all 100% okay with it because we were going to get to ask our questions. And then we realized that it wasn't as nice a deal later. At that, like, at that point, it's just like, we didn't know what we were getting into, yet. so I guess lesson is to ask more questions before agreeing to anything that affects more than just ourselves. Yeah. But, we, do you and think? That's why he's kind of quiet. He's like, I guess I don't really like. I'm annoyed at the situation, but I don't have these strong emotions against at Cadillac for all of it. So. So why did Corvette not like come to Cadillac's defense? Be like, you guys are being a bit hypocritical mm. right now. Mm. Cause he was just I don't know. I think I couldn't think of anything fast enough. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, there's so much going on. What do I think? Uh Yeah, that's true. That's I think that's totally it. But Corvette I the He gets the frustration, he feels the annoyance of it. 
So maybe it was like, okay, this is, needs to be aired at some point, and then we'll move on. So, okay. no use That's keeping true. it in. If we're sticking, if we're running away from the profane guard and all this stuff, we gotta be able to at least work together, okay? And hopefully this helps. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, that's that's a key word. <laughs> hopefully. Hopefully, I, uh, I, yeah, I, uh, I tend to like think over. I don't. So like, we end our games at like twelve thirty or one, uh, Eastern time for me. I usually don't go to sleep until like three because I'm just like laying there thinking about like everything that happened and how my character feels about it and then like what she might do in the next game about it and then i mm -hmm. like throughout the the next like week sometimes a little bit past week i'm like imagining scenarios of like this is what i want to do this is what i want to do like um the brush and the the colorful thread that i got yeah. that was something that i was like all right i want to do this and i was thinking about it like all week before we played i was like i want to make sure not to forget that i have like a list in my notes of like this is stuff that i need to do and it's mm -hmm. some of it is very like story focused some of it is more role play focused and then some of it is just stuff just just because i want to just stuff you know because our I characters actually, are people so they, yeah, they're actually, not just there to be the story yeah I love the part that you just bought, like, the hairbrush. It was just like, all right, there we go. Yeah. Just, just, I think it also helped. It was like a real symbol of, like, no, everyone's different than their appearance, than what they mm -hmm. look like. It's like, no, you actually want to feel and look a lot better than maybe your, the dust and the grime make you feel and look. Well, she, she has not always been a really bedraggled um messed up sort of person Apparently, yeah so she she is like she's she's been wanting to go back to her old life a little bit and this is about as much as she can do right now kind of because mm -hmm. everything is outside of her control except for this one thing that she can do to brush her hair and then immediately have to get thrown down into a sewer and chased by a bunch of cultists so you know, yeah, she's what the heck, nothing works mad. out. <laughs> That's what set off her anger at everyone else, was <laughs> going into the sewers. No, it was, it was getting yanked back out of the sewers. I was just like, oh no, just trust me. We're going to get out of the sewers now and go run across where we could totally be seen and caught. And uh, yeah, you, yeah. I'm not going to tell you why. It's like, no, you freaking tell me why. You're make, asking me to risk my life. You tell me why. You don't make me... No. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. That was definitely part of it. People affecting her life. She's not cool with that. Um, we got two last questions here uh, from Little Miss Fodder. Reaction to the librarian revealing herself. We did already kind of talk about this. Super. Just carve it. I was like, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> and then, and then he, oh gosh, he's like, you gotta be kidding me. And then the freaking fight. He is so, so, I already, I told the group after, but Corbett has a lot of emotions going on right now. And one of them is a sense of uselessness because he's gone down in like the last two fights in a row, yeah. I think. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, I do nothing. I've tried, like, he's tried so many things. So he's very frustrated, feeling useless. Yeah. He's very checked out at library too. Uh, what is what is Corvette's like constitution modifier? How many hit points uh, does he plus, have? Is it is that one a plus two? I think that's a plus two. Okay, so it's not it's he's not got, nothing. No, he's so we're level five now, right? We just got to level uh, five. Yeah. Surprise right. for I'm anybody right. who's not in the in the player group. We did level oh, up at the end sorry. of last game. <laughs> We're at level five now. Everyone can, you know, keep track of where Grand we're Grand announcement. <laughs> hey, it's pretty great. We get a cool stuff. I have, I'm looking right now, 30 something. 39 hit points total. So it's like, yeah. Should be able to take some stuff, but yeah, wow. I just, Cora just got You have more than I do. That's ridiculous. I really good this time. I was like, Oh, the I haven't rolled for level five bad. yet. I've rolled really, really bad for my hit points. Um, 
I did before, yep. too. But this one was great. I got like a seven. I was like, huh? Ah, yes. Should I roll my hit points right now? Are you doing it right now? Please. Right now. I hate this part. A four. That is yet another oh, below no. average. Yes. I don't think AC... I've had a single one that was above average. So. Oh, that's yeah. annoying. Um, to Patrick, he's like, I think Corbett has a lower AC in general. I do. He is looking for whatever great light armor he can find that's, you know, plus two to AC in case you want to throw him a bone or something. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, yeah, no. Uh, Ace, his AC is really bad. 14. Yeah. So. Well, that's not that bad, especially for uh, for a warlock. That's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, no, no we, we now have the same max hit points, 39. Hey, there we go. Which, not great considering I have a full You're hit die size it. higher than you. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I have never gone down. No. You're like, you have gone down once with the golem. Well, that's true. Just the once. Our not gym. nearly as many it's... times. No, I've gone down twice, if not three times, in the whole campaign. I think I've gone down three times. I so think yeah, this is no, what no. happens when we fight cults and you're like very obviously an ASMR and there's like, hey, uh, I hate angels. Maybe I'll go for the angel guy. That seems like a well, good idea. Well, apparently that's what Patrick's doing now. He's like, <laughs> oh, it's like a goal to get Corbett down every battle now. Like, no. <laughs> <laughs> but now I'm like taking it as like a challenge. I'm like, hey, I'm going to be useful and stay alive. <laughs> so... Warlocks are often like mid range, so sometimes they're in the front and sometimes they're in the back. Yeah. Gotta start attacking from far away. Although, when you get hit by a fireball, yeah, not a lot you like... can do. Um, 19 points of damage or something? 29. 29. There was 29? Yeah. I just watched no it again yeah. a couple days ago. Yeah. Um, last question. <clears throat> okay. What are Corvid's thoughts about tea in secret and leaving Rayla behind? Um, the the second part's easy to answer. The right now it's just leaving all of them behind. Uh, it's not necessarily. Uh, he just is so close with all three of them. Like they, all of them are super important to him. So it's like, at in that moment, it's like I have to leave them. And they are le helping, they are forcing me to leave them. Um, so that's just like super tough on him. Um, so right now the they're just kind of all jumbled into that, leaving them behind okay. feel. Uh, T in secret is like, what? Well, first off, I'm ticked that, you know, I was down. Corbett was down when the wings appeared. He, you know, gets healed and it wakes up. It's like, what the Tien has, <laughs> what? <laughs> So like he, he misses out on like the reveal, but, so he's like shocked. At the same time, he's not he's never ever would have guessed that Tien was an Asimer, but at the same time he's like that explains so much about <laughs> Tien. Just oh yeah, his stalwartness, his uh, just like drive to do good, to be good and and be honorable, that type of stuff, and just like his devotion is like. And, and uh, he's just such a bad A guy, so it's like, okay, that makes sense. I just had a but realization. completely shocked. Does Corbett have an angelic guide? Because Elodin is not the angelic guide, right? Mm-hmm, you're right. Okay. Have we, have we seen it yet? You have not seen his, or no, uh, no communication during the campaign has happened with his angelic guide. That's what I thought. So, you're, I yes. Thought. There is a... Corvette is a man torn. He is very much torn. That's actually what I wrote in his description. So. Uh, you've heard it here first, everybody. Uh, Corvette is secretly evil. Uh, no. <laughs> struggling with his desires to murder all of us. So uh, stay tuned for next week when that all goes down while we're sleeping. He kills us all. <laughs> oh, yeah. Not so secret. Starting with Drith. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. He's, he finds, you know, Drith is fun and amusing and he's like, oh, keep him around, right? <laughs> That's so 
such a sad little thing. I'm just like, oh, he's, you know, he amuses me. We won't, we won't get rid of him quite yet. No. He, he could be my court jester, you know. <laughs> I mean, I will be totally honest in saying that that's a very similar thought to how Jelonia feels. I'm just like, he's dumb, but he's kind of nice, I guess. So I won't, I won't, yeah, I won't be terrible to him. says to you, though could be rude, aren't meant to be. But then sometimes he's so, so nice. And then he's very sweet too, yeah. Yeah. He almost cuddled with me. <laughs> That was so the most terrible way. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. <clears throat> well, I have so many more questions that I could ask you. I have but... a question for you. Oh yeah? For, for Anya. So, what is making Anya stay with the group after leaving the valley? So... She wants to go to a place she wants to find out a thing and she knows that the group will eventually probably do that and she thinks it's better to do it with them than with than by herself though she often questions that when we go into a city and because of the actions of her companions they get chased out by cultists and knights um so there's definitely some times where she's like maybe it would be better if i just left because at least I know how to like hide out and not get caught um but I've actually been thinking about this a lot recently in the she feels very powerless she feels that she doesn't have any control over anything and that's not new for her um but the dark priestess was able to yank us all out of our lives just because she wanted to and she failed in getting us to where she wanted us to go but that doesn't mean she's not going to try again and so there's kind of this thought of like whatever i want to do this like uh, other higher powerful people are just going to ruin it for me no matter what so essentially my life is over and oh. I have no, I, I'm, I can't really be a person the way that I want to because I don't have that choice. Um, so why not, why not do something? It's very, very nihilistic sort of a thing. Um, yeah. So there's, there's definitely a lot of like, she doesn't really know why she's doing anything because nothing really matters. <laughs> Because there's some super powerful cultist lady who probably wants to kill her and could so easily do that whenever she wants to. So she's just kind of waiting to die mm -hmm. a little bit. Yep. Well, <laughs> hey, you know, we all have go through moments when we think we're all going to be killed. In D&D, at least. Yeah. And there's a Not. higher power controlling the plot. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I seriously love the the contrast between uh, Corvit and Drift and Artyom and her, because it's just like, there's, there's such altruistic people of like, I want people to be happy, I want people to be good, and I will, you know, inconvenience myself and possibly even endanger myself to help other people. And she's very much just like, I just don't want to die. I, like, I don't care, because I, if I'm dead, that's the end and I hate it I don't want it and interacting with good people who are very altruistic makes her feel like trash because mm -hmm. it's like w these people are good and especially with Artyom he knows that he's a good person and he <laughs> preaches that everyone else should be good and so she hates it she hates it so <laughs> much it's like you're telling me that I'm bad stop it you make me feel bad go away don't talk to me I don't like you <laughs> So, <laughs> that's why oh. she specifically hates Artyom. I told Adam that at the end of last game. I was like, just so you know, like, this is why. Like, <laughs> don't stop doing what you're doing. It's perfect. It's amazing. I'm just wanting to explain to you why she hates your character so much. Yeah, I see those yes. emotes in the chat, Adam. Yeah, that smirky face. Mm. Well, yeah. I could go on and on. 
because I I know I, I think about it all the yeah. time. But I do right. need to switch over to talking to my husband about his character who went home to his hometown uh, in our last game, and we're gonna do a puzzle. Yeah. Have fun. <laughs> Okay. So yeah, uh, thank we you are so gonna much. switch. Yeah, thank you for coming on. For anyone who wants to hang out, we're it's gonna be a little bit different setup. We're not gonna have the cool rehash couch and everything. We're gonna switch. We're gonna take a small second setup, and then we're gonna be doing a puzzle while we answer questions. Thanks cool. so much, Brayden. I'll see you next week. Thank you, Lydia. Okay. In whatever you shenanigans week. happens. <laughs> okay. All right. Take care. See ya.